Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at the Bucket Wheel Excavator, which, much like the tunnel boring machine, comes in two different sizes. We have the big one, which is what we're looking at, and there is a smaller one. If I was to press F10 and come over to the blueprints, the big one only takes up 3,961 blocks, while the smaller one takes up 1,774. So both of them, despite being large in size, have a minimal impact on performance. So what does this machine do, you ask? Well, if it isn't obvious already, it's going to flatten out an area very slowly with the big drill head on the end. It will just sweep backwards and forwards until the mountainside or whatever you're trying to excavate is as flat as the surface the vehicle is on. In my case, it's going to be as flat as this ice patch, which is right next to the starting Earth-like base, but for you, it might be a little bit different depending on where you've put it. So what does this giant machine feature? Well, it has wheels, which surprisingly, it can move on. It's very heavy, it moves very slowly, but it can move around if you want. Turning can be a bit of an issue because it can be a little bit lopsided depending on where the drill head is, but still it works very well. It has conveyor tubes which come from the drill head all the way down to the end here, which has ejectors on. So if you had a vehicle with a collector on and put it underneath it, it could poop out all the resources and you could collect it and travel away to your base. If I come over to the drill head, we have multiple drills that will spin around and excavate the area. If I go a little bit closer, we have welders which are there to repair the drills. So in case anything gets damaged in there, it's going to just repair it up as it goes along. If you go too fast, you're going to damage the drill. So having the welders there is going to resolve that situation. But let's now take a little tour around the actual vehicle itself by going up these ladders. Yes, this vehicle features a lot of the new blocks, the hydrogen engines, the ladders and such. So we're just going to come up the ladder, come up the second ladder, go up the third ladder. Yes, there are little like balcony parts all the way around, but we don't need to go around there. So this is the rear of the vehicle so you can see where it's dropping off the resources. You just stand here and tell your friend to back up a little bit more or you're too close or whatever and have them drop the resources in. Then we can run down this with nice little safety rails. Don't mind the medical bay over there. And then we got this. We come to the main body and we can go around. We can take a little look in here. If I use my jetpack, we can see little blocks in there. So that's if you want to repair it in case it's got damaged. Hopping down this ladder is another little balcony part, but nothing much is going on here. No features, no nothing, it's just a decoration. So going back up and over to here, I will come to those ladders in just a second. We then have the control seat, which I'll also come back to in a minute. Around here are the programmable blocks. And then all the way back around, we have another little ladder that goes down to another little level, but there's nothing much which goes on there. We've got lights all the way around. And we're back where we started. So the ladders over here are how you access the next floors up. So if I was to press F, climb up this. Press F, climb up that again. We're now here in a very dangerous area. We have this, which is not a ramp to go up, health and safety and all that. We want to go up this ladder, but I'm too lazy, so I'm using my jetpack. And then we're on sort of like the main area where we can then hop up here and see the drilling head, make sure everything is still intact, make sure the conveyors are conveying all the resources. We can come round all the way up to the front here where we have some panels. We have the start, we have the flat mode, and we have to stop the machine, but that's also on the control panel which you saw earlier. And now it's time to go up this ladder. So going up this ladder, we'll go up to another floor, and we have like a little sneaky part where we can look in there just to see what's going on on the inside in case something breaks down. We can run all the way around, not up but there. And we have the hydrogen engines We're sitting there looking all lovely. Shame they've hit up the little fan because I do like the little fan on the end there. And we're going to run up here, all the way around. Over here is a major health and safety hazard. Need to have some kind of safety rail there because I could just fall off and die. Oh, do you like my shoes by the way? I didn't have the full set, so I just slapped on some slime shoes. Running up here, we got some decorational blocks. And nothing much else. 
Most of this stuff isn't functional, it's just there to look pretty, especially from a distance if I was to zoom out. You can see there it's got like the little counterweights or whatever they are on the drills. Raw resources, I'm not sure what they are, perhaps you can correct me. But anyway, now's the time we come to the actual driving and functions. So over here is the control seat, it has the same options as the little panel that you saw just over there. But what are they? So first one is reaving, second one is a disc rotor. These two are if you want to manually drill. Pressing number one is going to lower it, but I don't want to lower it just yet. And pressing number two will change the direction in which the drill head will turn. It's very useful when you're trying to just get it to flatten out an area. It was a little bit confusing at first because of how slowly the road head moves, but once you get used to it, it's all fine. Number five is a projector, which is this thing on the front. So if I was to undo the parking brake and reverse this big old beastie, You can see there's multiple colours. So the yellow part on the projector is where the actual drill is going to cut through. So what you want to make sure is the yellow is in the area where you want to drill. So if I keep going forwards, the red will disappear. And this is the area where I want to drill. So I'm going to press P for the parking brake. So that's how you know where you're going to drill. Number six is flat mode. Then we have hill mode, hill mode enable and then stop the machine. So what this means is, if I press number six, it's going to start everything up, the drills are going to drop down, and it's going to start spinning. Hill mode, I'm not actually sure what it does by the way. I believe it's just like, if I was going to drill out a hill, it will start very slowly from the top, and start working its way down to the flat level, but flat mode will just go straight for the flat ground. So it's going to turn very slowly. If I was to press number two, it would change its direction, but I do want it to go this direction. And then we're going to very slowly wait for it to hit the ground and it will start excavating. And you can see it is struggling a little bit which is why you would use hill mode instead of just straight up flattening mode. But it's doing a good enough job. The welders are making sure the drill heads don't break and it will slowly keep on going until the area is completely flat. And there we go. I'm now sending it back which will hopefully flatten it out. It does wobble a little bit so it won't be perfectly flat. But you kind of get the idea of what this machine actually does. If you wanted to, you could just ram it straight into a mountainside, but I don't have time to record that. So I'm just going to let this go back around again. Watch all the blocks flying out there. And there we go. It's sort of flattened out a little bit. It'll take a little bit of time. I mean, I could just leave this going and let it spin around and around and around. And that is basically it. So much like the tunnel boring machine, it's more about the fun of using it rather than the practicality of it. Because you wouldn't be using this in survival mode. And there are, of course, better ways in order to make a hole in a mountainside, much like warheads, for example. So now it's time to crash the bucket wheel excavator. So pressing I, coming to control panel, finding the tracks, we're going to turn on the power, we want the strength up, we want the speed limit to unlimited, and now we're going to move forwards. We're just going to crash straight into the other side of this ice field. 80 meters a second, let's remove the HUD, and keep going forwards. Off we go, bucket. Oh! Well, that was unexpected. And for good measure, let's just activate number six. I'm sure that'll do something. Left a big hole in the ground, and that's the underneath of the excavator. With all the hydrogen engines there being all lovely. So anyway, this is the bucket wheel excavator. It's in the description below if you want to download it and try it yourself. There is a smaller version if you want to try that. And like I said before, it's more about the enjoyment of using this thing rather than the practicality of it. So anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.